Okay, so when a car is just rolling without sliding, we can determine the center of rotation by the intersection between all four, the axes of all four tires. In this case, I'm only taking into account the, uh, the front tire on the turning side. In reality, the uh, two front tires are actually not perfectly aligned. One of them has to be turned slightly more or less in order to have its axis aligned with the center of rotation of the car. But I'm not really worried about that for the purposes of this simulation. Okay, so once we can do this, you can calculate the next position of the car because we know the the radius, the turning radius of the car, and we know the center of rotation. So you can just apply some small theta and just rotate the car about the center of rotation. When a car is drifting, the centripetal force is greater than the friction of the wheels, and that causes the car to slide out radially. So to simulate that, I added a drift factor, which takes into account the speed of the car and the angle of the front wheels. And so the greater the speed of the car and the greater the angle of the front wheels, the more um, the center of rotation is going to drift away from the car. Said better, the radius, the turning radius will increase in proportion to the speed and the uh, angle of the front wheels. So if you have a sharp angle of turning, then you're going to get more of a drifting effect. And let's turn on some of the drift so we can see what's happening. And when we trace the center of rotation, you can see that the center of rotation itself is now moving in a circle. And the size of this circle is going to be proportional to the uh, steering angle. So for a very slight turning angle we get a very small circle about which the center of rotation is moving about. For a very steep one we get a large circle almost approaching the radius of the motion of the car itself. Now the problem with this, this effect alone only gives me basically a constant uh, circle size, more or less. And it doesn't quite look right, because if you're going really fast and you start to drift, I'll turn on the power steering, you wouldn't expect it to move in a perfect circle right away. You'd sort of want that spiraling effect. So in order to get that, I added a momentum vector which accumulates on every frame so it it accumulates the current direction of the car the current direction of motion and uh, adding this momentum to directly affect the position of the car on every frame gives us a much better effect here so let me see if I can So now we get this nice sort of spiral motion before eventually that momentum is lost and then it'll move in a circle, which is what you'd expect for an actual car. So we can turn up this effect and you get a lot more of a realistic drift based on the direction you were moving in before you started to do a burnout. Uh, and that's pretty much it um, and then you can extend this concept to 3D because this is just describing the physical state of the car and it's up to you how you want to draw it so you can draw it the top down is pretty cool I think for this effect but this 3D is also pretty cool I think in 3D you can notice some of the slipping a bit more than you can in the top down 
which makes it a little uh, less uh, satisfying in my opinion, but maybe I can mess with the camera and get it to be a bit better.